Hello, welcome back to the channel. And today we'll be doing a little bit different video. I got my uh, pods in here and uh, we're gonna be talking about the hottest takes. Uh, might be a new style of video we do going forward. Gotta figure out that all out. But um, I just tweeted it out and said, hey, I was about a week ago and I said, look, I'm gonna have uh, some takes here and some video and I wanna see uh, what's going on. So I have uh, my hottest takes here and we'll see here what everyone says below. MSU takes down the shoe on 1111 from uh, the man himself, Chopman. Very hot take. Um, how could I see it happening? You know, we have Kyle McCord, which is named the starter. Maybe he's not as good as people wanted. Uh, they have some turnover there, and their defense isn't nearly as good. So a, a lacking offense with a bad defense. And um, if MSU has like a TCU-style jump to glory and goes from you know five and a half wins to a very competent team then i could maybe see this happening oh, i'll give this one a, a nine and a half out of ten on the craziness scale uh, we'll do chap last got a few down here as well uh michael cozy who you just saw him on the podcast uh, slash channel the other day Texas tech makes the playoff i don't think this one's that crazy um i think if they win week two against oregon you know, they got all the games in front of them and they just got to run the conference, you know, win the Pac-12 or win the Big 12, lose one game. I mean, we saw a Big 12 team losing a championship game, conference championship game, and still be a three seed. So I don't think it's the craziest one out there. I'd give it a, a nine and a half or eight and a half out of ten. Let's do that one. It, again, you know, we saw TCU do it last year. Tech was Tech, kind of a similar thing. Well, why not, you know? I like what they're doing out there. Jordan McGuire and the guys are going out there. Tyler Shuck, not Shaw. I learned from the last Texas Tech video that it's it's Shaw or it's Shuck, not not Show, because it's S O U G H. So, Mr. Morals, Gene, uh, Mr. Garrison, Mr. Morals himself here. Uh, South Carolina goes ten and two. Now he's a big fan of Spencer Rattler. I think what are those two losses? I mean, I guess it would be they win every game except Georgia. And uh, they lose, I guess, or beat Clemson, uh, lose to Clemson and lose to Georgia, I guess would be the, the two thoughts there. Um, and we can look at their schedule real quick. They've got a pretty tough schedule here. They've got UNC. They're already favored to lose this game. Um, but I'm recording this, our voters will come out after this game so we can see if it makes sense or not. Mississippi State, you can win. Florida, you can win. At AM, and that's a tough one. Missouri and Jacksonville State, and we checked the state thing that I either win those games with the win Vanderbilt, win Kentucky, basically win all of your home games, right? Your road games are Tennessee, Georgia, you know, Clemson in there as well, and AM, and you got to split those four, right? In addition to beating UNC, if it one of the toughest schedules in the country, it'd be very hard to do it. I'm going to put that at a 9.2. Um, it's crazy that a season one is as high as that. So, um, Kansas State is a top eight team in the country and a dark horse playoff sweeper. Same kind of thing um, as last year, right? They uh, won the conference at nine and three. Um, barely, barely missed out on the playoffs, I guess you could say, but one or two bounces there. A lot of injury at quarterback, but they bring back Will Howard. Uh, Prime is doing a good thing out there with their, with their program. I, I could see kind of combining these two. I'll say it's an eight and a half as well. I mean, you could really see either one of these teams in the Big 12. Again, I'm not super high in Texas. We're a horns down podcast at the moment, or a channel at the moment, but um, I think that they both have the rosters to do it. I mean, we can kind of combine those one. So call me Bearcat. Um, he's got a few ones. And he's also got some on the other tab. We'll do that there. Uh, Michigan National Champions. I could definitely see it. I've heard it many times, and I don't really need to go much of that one. Ohio State finishes third in Big Ten East. Now, this is the kind of the, the, the common take out there. They win the, the tiebreaker, uh, which is a three-way tiebreaker. It would be tough for them to finish third because they don't play any of the bottom of the barrel Big Ten West teams. Now, in terms of them finishing in third in the Big East, they'd probably have to lose both games to Penn State, or, uh, or to Penn State and Michigan. I think that would be the way that would happen. So that would be tough for them there. I, mean, I could see it. It's, it's going to be really tough. ECU contenders for a group of five near six bowl slot. I don't know. We'll find out a lot in this Michigan game again, which would be yesterday at the time of posting, but I don't really see it at all. I think they're finished split in the bottom half of the American um, right now, so it'd be crazy. Florida State makes the playoffs for Clemson. Again, I don't see it. I think Clemson is going to beat them. How would it happen? The transfers get together quickly. They beat LSU and they beat Clemson. You know, those two wins alone can propel you into the playoffs. 
you know, Ico Lusa comes in the first time and get revenge at the end. You can't lose two games, though, so they have to beat LSU, basically, and they could split against Clemson win the last one. Alabama doesn't make the playoffs. I could see it. Um, you know, if, if two SEC teams gets in, it's going to be tougher for it to happen, but we can kind of see what happened last year. They were a pretty good team, bad for Alabama standards, but 10-2 and two and missed the playoffs. You know, it, as soon as you lose two games, it's over. They're playing Tennessee, who's good again. They're still favored in that game. LSU is a tough game, and then you got an uh, SEC championship game in theory. If you don't make the championship game, do I see you making the playoff? I don't think so. Um, other than that one, um, Cincinnati beats Vegas as odds and goes to a bowl game. Now they're bringing them uh, a whole different system. Obviously, losing um, Luke Fickle to Washington, not Washington, Wisconsin, excuse me, and you're bringing in uh, Scott Satterfield, I believe is the guy's name, the dude from uh, Louisville. Wasn't the greatest. If you get a Malik Cunningham over there, I could see it. I guess you could go to a bowl game. It'd be tough. New conference first year. It's going to be tough to get up to scratch. But I, I don't see it, but I could definitely see it happening. Um, I don't see it personally. But, again, again, it could happen. Um, we'll, I think we'll put it at one of the 6 out of 10. Overall, obviously, a 9 out of 10. But, obviously, you got multiple ones there. So, uh, we'll, we'll hop on to the next one in a minute. But MSU starts 6-0. This would be beating Washington. This would be beating Iowa. This would be beating Maryland. In addition to Central and Richmond and uh, I think Rutgers. That's tough, man. I think they go three and three, four and two at best, six and zero. Oh, that's a nine, nine and a half. I mean, that's a crazy, crazy take by Mr. Daly MSU. Not biased at all, as you can tell in there, but. Again, it's not out of their own possibility. If the secondary is better than people think, that takes care of Maryland and Washington, right? Because that's what you got to do to slow them down is, is have a good secondary. So uh, Mike Black says Oregon makes the title. It, it'll be tough. I mean, they're one of the under, most slept-on teams in the Pac-12. You're going to have to win the conference. Uh, say lose one game along the way. Um, get into the playoff and – hopefully not face in a, a Georgia or Michigan type team and probably upset someone in there to get to the championship game. I'd be surprised if they were to win it. I mean, you could see a TCU type run from them this year and where it's like, Hey, maybe they're kind of a caper tiger, but you catch a team like Michigan slipping. Who knows? Maybe, maybe if Penn state makes a playoff this year, like everyone's predicting, you've got Oregon as a three seed, Penn state as a two seed. Penn state's never been there before and the lights are as bright as they were for Michigan. You know, I don't think there's many teams that win, you know, the championship or anything on their first entry of the playoff. It's been Oregon's first entry of the playoff in a long time, but they've at least been there before as a program. So obviously it doesn't really hold much because I'm sure no one's still employed at the university is there, but who knows, man. Then we've got my guy, big chap. Michigan State wins 11 games. Crazy. I don't think it'll happen. Uh, Colorado wins the Pac-12. Now, this could maybe happen next year if there were a Pac-12 and if they were in the conference. But um, I, I would say it's tough. It's be really tough. Um, pretty much, pretty much impossible. Let's be honest here. Will Rogers ends the season as a Heisman finalist. This is not a horrible one, honestly. Um, I think that could happen. Um, I know it's a different scheme, but he's statistically one of the best passers of all time in the history of the city state and the SEC. But I think they'll still let him throw the ball a lot, but not as much as he would need for the Heisman, but I don't hate to take it all. South Florida comes close to beating Alabama. Now, again, if, if Bama's quarterback plays as bad as you think it is, and USF has this crazy offense that Tennessee's employed, Tennessee's coordinator helped scheme and beat Alabama last year. He obviously doesn't have the same horses, but I would say South Florida, we're going to say it comfortably covers is going to be the word. I don't think they're going to come close to beating them, but I think it could be within – within 20 points. And I think that's a little crazy, but I don't think it's that crazy. Because the game's also in Tampa. So, Graham Mertz takes a Burrow-esque leap this season. He's got some good receivers. He's got an unbelievable running back room, an okay offensive line, good defense. I don't think we'll see a Durbo at least season. Maybe maybe in two years you can see it. This upcoming season, you know, it, it you could see him do something crazy. I think Joe Milton's the easier one to say based on his scheme, but if Graham Mertz only has to do check downs and things like that, which he's been doing for the past few seasons, then it, it would be okay. I mean, obviously, you're not going to win the Heisman doing check downs, but 
he gets starts off that way with a few confidence. Obviously, he's got a schedule to do it. You know, he's an above average quarterback. They're going to be a good team. I could see it in two years, but I think it's, it's a little nuts. But hey, my guy, Jeff, it's, it's nothing but I expect from him. Arizona State wins 10 games. Again, it's a tough roster turnover. I love the coach, great attitude. If no bowl game, so maybe they go out there and play an FU tour and win 10 games in the final, before they move over to the Big 12. Um, I don't see if it could happen. Lane Kiffin, co- coach of the year. I think it's more realistic than the next one, Old Miss, in the title, but. They've got a really good receiver room. They've got obviously one of the best running backs out there. If that defense is elite, and it's pretty much impossible for it to be, but if it is elite, then I guess this is definitely a possibility if, if you have that good of a defense because that offense is going to be humming. So if if Lane turns it on, you know, you're playing Bama, you're playing the whole SEC West, in addition to Georgia being a crossover game, you're able to win against Bama and Georgia or one of the two and propel that into a kind of season he had last year. I could see in a New Year's Six Bowl playoff is a bit of a stretch. I could see in the 12-team playoff, but it'd be crazy. And not only that, it's Michigan beating Ole Miss in title. It's a uh, 11 out of 10 on a difficulty scale. But if Lane Kiffin gets them to a New Year's Six Bowl, I think he could be in the discussion for Coach of the Year because it's pretty clear they not have the most that they've got to deal with over there. they got you know not the most facilities and things like that, and they're in the SEC West with a crossover game against Georgia at Georgia. So unbelievably tough for them. But, yeah, that's, that's what we have for that. And um, looking over here at this last one here, um, the winner of Ohio State Notre Dame goes to the playoffs. Now, I think this is not nearly as crazy to take from my guy, Chap, as uh, it was before this weekend. Um, and, obviously, this is coming off of, how good Sam Hartman did. I think it's, I would say, I'm going to go with a six out of 10. I think it could happen because I think if Ohio State handedly beats Notre Dame, they could go on a run. And if Notre Dame beats Ohio State, it's a huge win and they can go and win out. I mean, I don't think, I think Ohio State's our toughest guy on their schedule. So I think it's easier for Notre Dame than it is for Ohio State, as crazy as it is, because I think Ohio State beats Notre Dame is expected, right? Texas starts three quarterbacks this year. I like that one right now. Um, that would mean probably an injury, I guess. Um, I know there's a difference of opinion in backup with Arch Manning and Malik Murphy. Maybe if, let's say, Quinn gets hurt, God forbid, in the Alabama game again, they bring in, you know, Arch Manning or Malik Murphy, and they want to keep one of them's red shirts. They have Arch Manning play like another game, red shirt them, and then have Murphy start, and then maybe Ewers comes back at the end. I think that's the only way it happens. I'd imagine it'd be tough if. They pulled them. It'd be cool. They're one of the only teams out there with a three deep quarterback room where they'd be probably okay with all three guys starting. Um, but that's a really good one. And uh, the final one, your YouTube viewers are going to call me, say this, call me Bearcat guy knows ball. Now he had some pretty crazy takes, but um, if you're going to say Michigan wins the championship on my channel, people are going to love you. So I think uh, Mr. Bearcat does know ball. So uh, go Bearcats. Uh, one of our good family friends is uh, over there. Just committed there for swimming. So we'll see her there this year. But uh, shout out to Bearcats. Shout out to everyone that, that uh, commented and, and did everything here. So I appreciate all you guys. Uh, there's my Twitter, my little photo of me and my good friend here. So, um, yeah, there, there it is. There's it is. There's the, the records right now. But, um, yeah, thank you all for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.